Let me miss time. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let me just introduce. Hello, ladies. It is Thursday, July 6th. Oh my gosh, it's already in July. Okay. And I am Pastor Stella uh, of Kingdom Culture Church. We've had Kingdom Culture Women's Ministry for, uh, I always forget how many years. It's been six or seven years. I will get, I will nail that down. Okay, soon. <laughs> it just runs all together. But you guys, I'm excited for today. We have a great uh, message for you. We actually are doing a Q&A. So I've asked the ladies to come up with some questions that they had. Maybe there's something going on in their lives right now that they want a direction on. And I'm going to um, just kind of minister in that place to them. And you can listen in or you can ask questions on top of those questions, right? So um, right now I'm going to go ahead and open up. Who has the first question? Feel free. The first one will always break. Oh, Jen. Okay. I see you. Go ahead. Sorry. Let me know if you can hear me. I hear I you. Know. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, so I have been recently um, wondering because so just trying to do everything through God and um, and really change ways, you know, like even with things that we watch, things that we listen to, uh, everything like that. So I noticed, um, you know, like a few months ago that I just noticed the things that I was listening to wasn't good, you know, or watching they weren't start picking up on it, you know? So, um, my thing now is how, cause I like to listen to podcasts, you know, business podcasts and things like that. Um, how do you, like, is there anything that you're listening to that can help guide or soften that? You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I guess like certain podcasts that um, that are business oriented that do that it's off of, you know, faith, you know, faith yeah. in the Bible, like Bible based, I guess. Um, so yeah. that was something that I was kind of really interested, interested in doing, um, just to make it easier because I know we, it's so easy, you know, everything that's out there, everything that's on the TV, everything that you hear, even the commercials, you know what I mean? And, it, and all it takes is it takes, um, a, something little, you know what I mean? To start going the other way. And the main, I recently started this um, consistently, like just trying to do this a couple of weeks ago because um, Jason was watching something and it, the, he was watching something and it just, it triggered a trauma for me. Okay. Um, and I didn't realize because, you know, like when, when we went to encounter, you know, yeah. and, and I gave it, you know, I gave it to God, I left it at the cross and it was good. And it never bothered me since, you know, um, and and it, you know, ugh, it was just crazy. So it triggered something for me and I, it was almost like reliving it again. It was like, it was so bad, you know, like hyperventilating, you know, I had to take myself out of the room. I was crying. I was just a mess. And, and I was, and it, it was like, I, I was going through it again, you know, and, and for a second, I let, I let it get the best of me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I couldn't breathe. And then I was just like, okay, what am I doing? You know, and I'm like, okay, nope, like it was already taken from me. Like, why is this trying to get picked back up? So it made me realize too with that. Cause after that, I was like, okay, it was fine for the rest of the day. You know, after I was like, okay, no, I'm a child of God. Like, no, I'm not picking this back up again. God has already taken that from me. Um, so after doing that, it started make, making me realize, you know, like, hey, um, there's little things like this that can open up the doorway to let those things in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's why I was just uh, if you have anything that you guys listen to, if anybody has anything that they listen to, just something to to listen to while you work, while you clean, you know, yes. just but um, fillers, okay. I guess, you know, <laughs> so like that. Don't to do the work. <laughs> okay, thank you for sharing that. Good question. That's a really good thing to do because what you put in is what's gonna mm -hmm. come out, right? What you put in is what's what you're gonna. Uh, teach to somebody else, right? That's why you feast on the word of God, because the word of God will come out when you need it, right? Well, the same thing with leadership, you know, God called us to be leaders, right? But there is a fine line in, in the world, because there is the, the, you have a lot of people, I'll just say, like, there's mm -hmm. big uh, entrepreneur gurus out there, right? They're like, you got this, you can do it. Only you, you can do it, right? So you have yeah. those cheerleaders who are like, you got this, you got this, right? You got, well, if you know your walk with Christ, you don't got this, right? Yeah. <laughs> but Jesus does, right? So there is that fine line of who to follow when it comes to that kind of stuff. I know because I, Kyle and I had a business for seven years. Uh, yeah, seven, six years, seven years. I, I'm so bad at that. Okay, <laughs> my time frame. But we had a business that we grew up in, you know, and 
um, some of it was faith-based, but a lot of it, we, we can tell and discern that it wasn't. A lot of it was <laughs> I, 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 okay? And, you know, if you're following in, in the, you, you can have a business successful that glorifies God, you know? So I would definitely suggest on the podcast that you listen to, search in um, Christian podcast leadership, Christian leadership podcast. There are so many, I'll give you a couple names of them. People that I love to listen to. Okay. So there's one. Um, so I've been listening to John, uh, Rome. John, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've heard of him. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So, yeah. um, and I know he's, you know, um, I hear it and that's why I was like, I, and he hasn't said anything, you know, that kind of, you know, alarms or anything like that, yeah. but you can tell like he's faith-based, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's yeah. Bible-based. Uh, so then I was just like, okay, but I couldn't find, I felt like I couldn't find any, any yeah. other ones. So, you know, it's, it's so hard because it's so few that actually are, you know, Bible-based. So Craig Gershel is, um, he's a pastor. I put, I put his name right there, Craig Gershel. If you guys want to copy these down, Chad Veach. These are pastors who um, have churches who are, who teach on spiritual leadership, right? Because you can have great leadership, um, man, but when you, when you see it the way God does it, right? The biblical way to lead, it, um, it's, it's not, it's different than the world's view of it, like managing, right? Man, you're, you're a manager, a manager wants to sit back and let you do the work, right? A leader will lead the way and they will push you up right? So that you are being lifted up in the process. So um, it's huge. It's huge to do, do this. There's a, um, there's a book out called um, Spiritual Leadership. And this is by J. Oswald Sanders. I think that's what it was. Yeah. So that's a great book. Um, that's really good to, to watch. But I would say my favorites would be Chad Veach and Craig Gershel for leadership. Um, who, oh, Obed, Obed Martinez. He's out of Destiny Church, California. His leadership is so amazing too. He, you can actually find them on YouTube. So they have podcasts, but they also have YouTube videos. I highly suggest these people start there. Um, if you guys have one that you guys like, go ahead and put it, put it in the comment box right there that you like, but I, I absolutely, these guys right here, amazing. Um, oh, John Bevere. I'll say John Bevere too. He's, he's really good. Um, but those are probably my top three right there for So as far as that goes, so now as you are watching, yeah, it's real talk, Kim, she's straight up, <laughs> but as you are watching, uh, certain things, right. When you watch or when you listen to certain things, you just want to make sure that your discernments is on, on, you know, is on, <laughs> I'll just say that, right. That, you know, okay, that doesn't sound right because it doesn't matter how much somebody knows the Bible. I don't care if they know that Bible inside and out. So does the devil. Okay. Yeah. And, and they will use, and the enemy will use that scripture, twist that scripture to make you, to make you feel good. Right. So always keep that discernment up, you know, just because they use scripture does not mean that they are, that they're of the kingdom. Okay. Cause the enemy has found a way because even with new age, right. He has used, um, Perla, you might want to, uh, oh, I think you might want to put that on everyone. It's coming straight to me. So be, be way, very aware of, right. Of who, um, who, what they're saying, does it line up with the Bible? Does it, does it, does it hit you a little weird? Like, oh, that doesn't sound right. Right then um, that's your discernment telling you, uh, don't listen to that part, right? Uh, there might be some leaders in the, in the, the, the work world who are, or business world who give you good words. And there's just some things that you don't listen to, right? There's something I can listen to people. There's just some things I won't pick up, right? You know, and it's okay. You know, just pick up what you need to pick up. Um, and just know also that they're people, but the ones that I know that I trust that I can listen to is those three that I posted for sure. Yeah. And then your other question about, so on um, triggers. So absolutely. You want to be very aware of what triggers you, right? Because yeah. the enemy's, his entire goal and plan is to trigger you. His whole plan is to 
flash a picture on the screen, to flash a, a video on your phone, to flash a, like something at you to bring you back, right? To where um, you came from, where you were saved from, right? There's a difference between um, uh, triggered into, because what, what you've overcome should not hit you in a place where you're hurt again, right? Because at this point, if you overcame it, it should be like, oh yeah, that happened to me. Because now you're in a teaching place. You're in exactly. a testimony place. Now, it does it hurt to go back and remember that? Yes. Like you, you're going to have emotions. There's things that happened in my life that I look back and I'm like, oh, and I, I will get emotional and cry. Okay. That doesn't mean that I'm still living in it and I'm still hurt by it. Yeah. It still affects me in that way. Right. Um, now I'm not going to watch things that will take me back to those triggers purposely, unless I'm intentionally doing something that I need to, uh, to speak and teach on. Right. Yeah. Need, there's something that like, I, I need to be aware of this. I need to make sure that I'm in that strong place. Right. Um, yeah. but things that, you know, like for like watching TV shows, like I love, Oh my gosh, I love TV show. Like I, whenever we do, I don't get into my bed until like one in the morning and sit here and I watch that while I'm working. I just, but uh, there's TV shows that I really like to watch like, um, Virgin river. I really like that show. Mm -hmm. I love those, those stories. Okay. But I have to fast forward some areas. As soon as they kiss, I fast forward. I don't want to see it. Right. Because you're triggering something that mm -hmm. was something that I went through in my trauma. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know where that's going to lead to, and I don't want to yeah. see it. Right. Yeah. So I will fast forward it. Um, so things like that, you know, cause you're going to see things. It's just, you do, do it fast, do it fast. Yeah, just, you, know, fast it. Um, Jay, uh, you know, Jason, you know, he, cause he watches, he watches lions. Right. And I don't like watching that. Um, I feel like we've had fan, you know, just like our family and just stuff, you know, just being around that for so long too, what is it? A, you know, Mayans, like the Mayans. Oh, okay. Like Mayans or something. So he always watches it when I'm not there, you know? Okay. Um, and it's just like, uh, you know, just certain family members that I have. So you kind of know like how it goes, you know, um, and mine too, like, so it's like S, you know, what is that S, uh, the special victims unit? Yes. <laughs> you can't do those. Uh, and so, like, he didn't, he didn't really understand because, um, he was like, what, you know, like you're crying, like, were you crying? Like, what, you know, what's going on? And I took, but I told him, I'm like, no, I just, I can't watch it. I choose not to watch that, you know? Um, so it was crazy because it's like how sneaky it was, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like perfect timing, you know? And it oh, was yeah. just like, crazy it was, and he did, I think he kind of understands it now. Um, but his question to you was just like, um, you know, well, I thought you were delivered from that, you know? And I was like, I was, cause, cause I feel like every time, you know, when I'm talking to somebody who's been through the same thing, um, I can talk about it and it's okay. You know, it's okay because I know it's helpful. Uh, but it was just that moment that it was just like, I mean, way well, down. <laughs> like it if, was you, just if, you, if you look yeah. at it this way, if you were delivered from drugs, uh -huh. would you go back to drugs? Yeah, it's okay. No. I'll just sit in the room with them. I'm delivered from it. Right. Yeah. That's where yeah. you, have it. you know what I mean? Or if you're delivered from um, alcoholism or whatever, whatever the sin was that, you know, sexual addiction, things like that. If you're delivered from pornography, you can't yeah. watch a show on yeah. TV that has sex on it. Right. Because you're going to, so, and, and listen, your whole, your conviction is your conviction. Okay. There's, there's things that, you know, Kyle will watch. Um, what does he watch? Oh, like those um, murder mystery things. And I, I can't listen to that stuff. I'm very visual. And I cannot do it. Right. And I'll be like, you know, I saw somebody post this the other day, like on so social media. I was like, you know, they said people who watch those, those, those murder mystery things have a little issue in the head. <laughs> I was just teasing him, but he's like, whatever. Like, you know, he's like, he goes, that's your conviction, you know? So, um, you know, and it, it is, so we got to make sure that the, the Holy spirit convicts us. Right. And, um, and that's our conviction. Now we can be the, the helper and say, Hey, I, you know, we can be like, I will not watch it. Like Kyle will know he won't watch it in front of me, you know? And, you know, so if he wants to watch that, I don't, I don't want to see it. He'll change it. I come in the room, you know, and that's, that's the, the partnership that you guys can have, you know, now, now, however, if he was to start throwing in, in some horror movies, which I know he would not do, but if he tried to do that, ah, no, 
no compromise there out of this we're not no spirit but the holy spirit in this house okay so you know there's some things where it's like okay we if if it's against god's word if it's or something that's then then we're not going to allow it but if it's just something that is a conviction for me that i it's a trigger for me i can't watch it you know um now like again horror movies or pornography right yeah. those, those are demonic so you can't they, you know it just depends what the root is coming from does that help yes it does thank you okay. okay thank you for asking all right who's up next and if you guys have more questions just keep writing them them down ask away I have a question. Yes. I um, recently started discipling someone and um, she comes from, from like a real Hispanic culture mindset. And she was a Catholic until recently about, I don't know, maybe eight months ago. But when the Lord called her, it was such a special moment in her life where she, her spirit was completely broken and she called on the Lord to save, spare her life. She wanted to be there for her kids. And she sensed like a, a feeling and just had a word flash in her head and it was Shalom. So she called her mom and her mom didn't know what that means. And her mom goes to Spanish. So, you know, maybe there's a Spanish word for it. I haven't looked it up. Uh, but then she called her daughter and her daughter helped her look it up on the internet. And we know what Shalom means, peace. Mm -hmm. And so she just was encouraged and filled with hope and was like, I want to give my life to the Lord. Like, I'm going to follow the Lord because she was Catholic, but didn't really attend, you know, just except right. for the special events. But anyway, so she went to church and was like all in, wanted everything with God. But when it came to getting baptized, She's like, whoa, I, I'm not ready. I've got to change. So now she's been about, uh, about six months, constant church, going to church and, and seeking God and all that. So I barely started uh, discipling her. I met her at my mom's church and she feels she is not ready to get baptized. Um, and, and I've tried to help her understand, but the worst, the worst thing is that she, like the people from her church have started to pull back from studying the Bible with her and just, you know, pouring into her because she won't get baptized and it, and their consistency, their, them being so persistent, their pers persistency is like turning her off. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I am just wanting to disciple her and just her help her learn what God says, you know, how much he loves her. Like, it, it is not, you know, we do see that the, that from the very beginning, it was, you know, accept and believe in be baptized and, you know, all that, but we know that it's not like a rule, you know, actually, it, you know, as far as I understand from what I know of the Bible is that it's not like a condition to be for your, for you to be saved, you know, mm -hmm. but we do know that it is a very important step to take for sure. Yeah. So I am just, thinking what do you do I mean I am not gonna stop discipling her I mean she's super encouraged uh from having me we do it via zoom and she's super excited to have me pour into her because she sees that her church has pulled back because they they're kind of seen her like rebellious this is an older woman and she you know she is has a beautiful heart and really really hungry for the Lord but she feels like she's not ready because she doesn't know how to read the Bible. She doesn't understand. She doesn't know the book. She hasn't, I, I sense this. She doesn't say it exactly, but I feel like she feels she has to hit a spot in her life where she's like, I'm good enough. Now I can get baptized. And we know that we're, you know, it's all by grace. And I've explained to her how salvation is by grace, not that we could do anything and stuff like that. But how do I, what do I do? You know, do I, put, I, I, I have explained to her and we have looked at scripture together. And right now I'm not, I'm not wanting to just stay focused on that. I'm wanting to, her, her to learn the character of God and, and his grace is what gives us the salvation that we have and all the things. Um, but I know that in the meantime, her church and her parents 
Um, they're older people who, you know, really feel like you need to do what I'm telling you because this is the right way, which yeah. is what's making her, yeah. I feel like, be more turned off than anything. How do I, yeah. w- would you push that on? Would you, how would you lovingly, so, how would you, how would you do, what would you do? So, I mean, what's, what's happening now is that she's going from religion to, uh, and I can let Aaron come in here and talk about this because, you know, uh, Aaron was raised religion in, in religion, but you're going from religion to all so you're taking all that off right like you got to like un- come from a, a place of um a baby and infant right so now she's going through the walking stage right she's going through that that okay I, I need to get fed I need to understand um so when you have religion you have a lot of knowledge a lot of unnecessary knowledge a lot of things that mm-hmm. you you over knowledge them to a place of like you need to reach this and reach this and reach this in order to to reach God's love right so you have to speak to her um as a baby, as a baby in Christ, you got to be like, Hey, throw all that stuff aside. I, you know, and you got to share your personal testimony, right? He says, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the hearing of our testimony, right? So you got to share where you were a wreck, where you lived in the pit and God saved you. Right. And it was because of the grace of God is not because of what you did. You didn't strive to go and be the perfect Christian. You didn't strive to go and do all these things. You were a hot mess. This is what we, 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 we need to do more is we need to say, I'm a hot mess, but God saved me. I was a hot mess and God saved me, you know, so God's going to save you too. Right. And you're not here to, to try to convince or try to, um, to be a perfect person. You'll never be that way. Right. And, you know, so you got to go from that place. She she's, has to remove all those chains of religion, on her, you know, so you'll have to come at her without like the, the, all of the, the info that you have. You got to talk to her at the beginning, right? And go straight into like what happened to Saul. Saul got vision, he ran, right? Mm -hmm. And we got to go from that place. We can't go from the, well, let's talk about the, who all this, you know, the whole biblical and the move and what, because, because you're going to lose them. Now they're going back into, okay, see that God's too big. How can a big God like that love me? Right. But when you say, no, let me tell you, because he's big, because he is God and he created me in his image. I, 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 man, I messed up. I was going down this path and I did these things and, and yet he still loved me. And is it, is it because I strive to, to make him love me? It's because he wrapped his arms around me in a place where I was broken. Right. And somebody gave me the, the gospel shared God with me. Right. So baptism, like the friends was a gal that came to my house. She came to my house, got delivered. She came out of religion, got delivered, came. That was a, that was a day during the week, came to church on Sunday for the first time. She has not been to church in a Christian church you know, um, I don't think ever. Right. So, um, came on Sunday, got touched by the Holy spirit was like, I'm getting baptized next week. Right. There's because she came in. It's not because I sat there and, and told her all these things. It's because I, I prayed for her. I told her that in, in your, um, in your weakness, that God is strong and God's God is here to save you. He loves you. He adores you. Everything about you, all the pain, all the sadness, all the anguish that you went through the trauma that you went through the religious chains that you that you had to carry god says none of that matters he breaks that off of you in jesus name and god loves you and adores you he treasures you he loves everything about you right because they're coming in broken so you got to get that root out you got to get that brokenness you know and 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 expose it you know and then when she came in on sunday because that was just one not one afternoon with her in, in my house when she came and spoke to me right and so then she comes and she felt the holy spirit herself and in the presence of the Holy Spirit, that you you want to fall, right? And she just she wants to scream and yell out Jesus, right? And so, it's not you so much trying to because discipleship's going to come, discipleship's coming, right? So now she's she's walking. She doesn't have to do all that stuff to to get to that place, right? So hopefully that makes sense. You just want to talk to her from a place of of an infant, right? And teach her from that place. And say, you know, all the things are great to know about God. You're going to learn about him. You're going to read about him. You're going to hear, you know, see the words that he said. But let me tell you what's important right now. The important thing is that, that you were born a sinner. 
you came into this world a sinner and that's why you have experienced some things because the enemy wants to keep you a sinner, right? But God sent his son to die on the cross for you to take every sin off of you. So all the doors that were open for you, that when you came into this world, all those generational curses that were open for you that you didn't open, but yet you partnered with, because that's the only way that you knew traditionally, culturally, family wise, right? You didn't know any better. So all those things, God didn't do that for you. He didn't give those doors to you, but you know what God did give you? He gave you Jesus who came to set you free. And that before Jesus, you had to live by the law. You had to earn your way, right? But now because of Jesus, you don't have to because he loves you, right? And there's a, a repentance that happens. And when you repent, because that's what you're, right? You're asking God to live inside of you. And when you repent, you're, you're turning from your old ways, Right? So if you're turning from your old ways and God want, and you accept Jesus into your heart today, we have, he has washed you clean. Your slate is clean. There is nothing there. There is no darkness there. There's all, he forgives you for all the things that you have done. You're forgiven. It's as if you've never sinned. So why wouldn't you want to go scream? Why wouldn't you want to go and get immersed into the water and declare out loud that Jesus is King? He saved me. Right. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? That, that does make sense. It makes a lot of sense. And it's pretty much my point of view as well. It's yeah. actually the, what the Bible says, you know, um, it, there's just this real strong fear of failing um, because uh, I've heard from her and my mom who attend the same church, uh, the fear of getting baptized and then failing God. Uh, apparently their church um, has seen too many people come get baptized and then leave the church. So there's this, there's this serious fear of failing God. Um, and I also struggle with that with my mom. My mom thinks like my mom is a smoker and she drinks from time to time and she is really, really seeking God and stuff. And she also has not gotten baptized because she thinks I got to stop smoking first and I got to stop drinking. and then you know, I'm not, she, she thinks I don't want to take God as a joke. So I don't want to get baptized. And then when I still smoke, so I really have talked to her a lot about, you know, no, that's religion. That's, you know, apart from God, we can do nothing. So I tell her when you accept God and you go all in with God, you know, he, you rely on him to take this addictions from you, you know? And so it's, apparently that's the the biggest fear i don't want to fail god i don't want to get baptized and then continue you know to do yeah. which that should be all of our heart right but we know that we're never going to reach a point of like i got baptized and i no longer sin period i don't you know we know that that's not a thing we and so it just breaks my heart because it's holding her back yeah and but, I, but I'm trusting that God's going to do it. I, I was just wondering your point of view. Um, I, it, it, I think it's tricky too when you're in a church that operates in religion <laughs> because you are getting mixed messages and, um, you know, and, but you just disciple her and show, show her the truth opposed to what the people are saying. And then she will decide, maybe I got to move from this, this place, you know, cause you know, we can't, grow in the place that broke us and we can't grow in a place that um that's hindering the holy spirit okay right. if there's a religion there's there's you're hindering holy spirit because it's holy spirit that's supposed to take over because when she goes to the altar she should feel the presence of god immediately tangible presence of god that's going to say here you go right and she'll she, she there should be no fear because fear is not from god you know and those things that they're aiming for are religious chains you know so um, bring her to encounter. She'll get set free at encounter. <laughs> I, I, my answer invite. to everything. Yes. Let God speak to her and whether, you know, wherever they go, at least they got that Holy spirit in them. They got the word in them. They can, they can know how, right. But striving Aaron, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I mean, I pretty much agree with everything that you said. I feel like, um, I know for me, um, like you mentioned, I grew up in religion, um, not Catholic, but um, Southern Baptist. And I kind of went through the motions of everything that I was told to do. I, I was like, okay, you say this prayer and then you get water baptized and then you're, you're good. And I mean, like, like you mentioned there, baptism isn't what gets you into heaven. Um, so they, they focus more on 
the salvation point of it. And that is, that is obviously the most important decision you'll ever make. But um, in water baptism, like that's kind of your first step of obedience in your walk with God. And um, it's something that like baptism, I didn't, I've never pushed on my children because um, I didn't want them to do it because I said so. I want them to listen to the Holy Spirit. And when he tells them it needs to happen, then they will do it. And that's exactly what happened with my oldest. Mm. Um, my middle has not come to that point yet. I feel like it's coming soon, but I don't want to keep pushing him um, because that's Holy Spirit's job. It's not my job. And um, the thing that I, I always think of is like, like you mentioned, when you are on fire for God and God has set you free and he's done all these things for you, you're not ashamed. And I know that there's fear sometimes with going in front of people. I wasn't, I'm an introvert. I don't like going in front of people. God's <laughs> changed that in me. But, um, so that can kind of be a fear sometimes where people are like, Oh, I don't want to do this in front of people, or I don't want to make a big deal. Well, Jesus made a big deal about going to the cross for you. So if you can't go in front of people who already believe who, who are going to be excited and, and happy for you that you're doing this, like, how can you go in front of people who are going to oppose you? So it is a process where you have to come out of that. I've also seen, seen people where they, again, at another side of religion will keep getting baptized thinking, mm. oh, I messed up. I got to do this again. And, and I see, like, I feel like with not to bash Catholics or anything like that, but they have like their confession and where they have to go and confess it in front of man and different things like that. So they will repetitively get baptized. And yes, we should always have a repentant heart. We should always come when we come to Jesus, like father, forgive me, but repentance is, is turning away from that. It's not, I'm going to keep doing this and God will forgive me. I'll just ask for forgiveness later. Repentance means turning from it. And with repentance comes surrender because your flesh is still going to desire those things. But when you're faced with it, you have to say, okay, God, I already gave this to you. I repented of this. I need you to help me not desire it anymore. That's where we crucify our flesh. We die to our flesh daily. Um, and that's where that kind of comes in. <clears throat> Amen. Um, I have struggled sometimes, like I said, with like I, I desire for people to get baptized and to step in obedience, especially with my children. But I don't want to be so religious that I feel like they're failing if they haven't done it yet, because that's Holy Spirit's job and their work in their life. So I, I would just encourage you, like Pastor Stella said, you know, just keep coming to her as if she's a baby Christian and feed her and Holy Spirit will do what he does, what only he can do. And it'll come. Yes, it's an important step, but it doesn't have to happen on our timeline and what we think That's right. has to, you know, it doesn't have to be like, okay, you got saved. Now you get baptized. Now you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now this, now this, now this, like, yes, those are steps that, that need to happen, but it happens in God's timing because there's a lot of things <laughs> that happen inside of us as he's changing us and transforming us. So. Amen. Amen. That's so good. Yes. Thank you. That's it right Thank there. You. Yep. You will know that, you know, that, you know, that you're ready, you know, and you just keep on discipling. Discipleship is not done in a lot of churches. You know, there's a lot of people don't have, even pastors, wives don't have discipleship. A lot of them, you know, so, um, you know, so it's good. You're going to be that one to teach her and walk her through it. And that fruit's going to continue to grow. You know, it's amazing. Thank you for asking. All right. Anybody else? Any other questions? I have one pastor. Yes. Um, about praying shawls. Is mm. that religion or is that, is that, what's the purpose of a praying shawl? Um, I don't do a praying shawl. <laughs> so, uh, I think a lot of things are cultural, traditional things that we do, you know, there might, it, it um, some things are religious, you know, it's your personal conviction. You know, if you want to put a praying shawl on you and you want to pray, 
you know, as long as you know that there's no power in the item, there is no power, just like a flag, right? There's no power in the flag. There's power in who you are worshiping, right? So there, as long as you understand that the item, the object has nothing in it without Jesus, right? Jesus is the one who's, who's who you're worshiping. He has the power. It is by the blood of Jesus, right? So there's some things that culturally you can do. Now I'm not, now I, I'm going to say like lighting candles in a, in a certain religion, not, not a uh, biblical, like those are things that um, are considered idols, right? Because of the belief in those, those candles and the, and the pool you're praying to the, the saints, um, which cannot hear you because they're regular people. So they can't, they can't hear you. Mary can't hear you. Right. But, um, but think, so does that make sense? Like, so if it's, if it's something that you like to do, that does not give power to the object that does not represent uh, something like, you know, we have a cross. I'm not praying to the cross that's on my neck. It's just an, a, a symbol, you know, that just it's a reminder, but it's not something that I use. So does that, does that help? okay yes does that make sense okay um yeah <laughs> that's probably all i gotta say for that. yes no power in the shawl some things you can keep hold on to some things you know if you feel it uh an uneasiness about a certain object you know um then there's your answer you know god will just give you discernment to like you know i don't need that you know I know a lot of uh, religions do cultural things. Anybody else? And if you have a question and you can't talk, you can't say it out loud, you guys can type it in the box too, if that's easier. But feel free, keep going. I'm loving all these questions. I have another question. Yes. Um, so I know like right now, um, I told my sister cause me and Jason and I have been in a, uh, spiritual battle lately, you know, and, uh, and it's just different things that are coming against us, which, uh, you know, just listening and stuff, you're knowing it's, it's seasons, you know what I mean? And, um, there's things that try to come back up, uh, and almost like tests, right. And, uh, I know lately too, because we have prayed for the house before, um, but it's just been almost like an exhausting spiritual battle, like where we are both, you know, tired. Um, and we know it's not that like, we know it's now, since we know so much more about God, we know what's happening. We're aware of it, but, um, too, it's just like, um, like, it's just different because little things trying to get our attention. You know what I mean? Like we have not been able to sleep. I think I got maybe two hours of sleep. And I mean, we're just laying there like, you know, so, you know, I think one thing I did last night, I was just like, okay, God, talk to me, you know, like, I was like, let me know, you know, just trying to pray and stuff. Um, but is there something too that, that, um, like advice that you can give from, cause I know I feel like I'm in a weird place because right now, um, or like just an unknown place because right now, since I'm still learning, um, but I'm further than what I was, I just feel like I'm kind of in limbo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, with well, this spiritual battle, just kind of going through and kind of trying to see what it is, trying to put out the fires or just kind of stop and reevaluate, you know, uh, and just cut things off. Like how I said with, with our household. Yes. So what I would do is I would sit and um, ask God to reveal to you what are areas that are hindering you, right? Personally, not what's hindering Jason. He'll have to do that on his own. But what are areas that, that God would not be pleased with? What are areas that, you know, maybe, um, I know you have a lot of teenagers in that house, young adults, right? <laughs> so what are areas that maybe they could be opening doors to, you know, because it affects the home, you know? So when you, when your house is in order, right? God, the husband and the wife, the children, ministry, everything else, it will flow. Okay. That doesn't mean that things are not going to happen. You're not going to have discussions with the purpose <laughs> with your spouse and things like that. But when there is an order in the house, then um, your, your chaos will be different, 
you know? So to ask God in this time and say, Lord, I need you to reveal to me the areas that I am blocking the blessings from. What okay. areas, what areas that are, am I, that I have not shut the door to? Um, maybe the other I'm pushing under the rug. We tend to do that. Right. Um, and then tell him to do the same thing and then come together and then say, this is what I got. What did you get? And then yeah. share it together and then uh-huh. pray and then say, okay, so what do we got to do to fix it? Right. Because until the house is in order, God won't yeah. move in there. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? You know, um, yeah. Uh, so I'm glad you brought that up too, because yeah. uh, you know, for, for anybody else who doesn't know, like Jason and I aren't married, you know, we've been together for 14 years. We're not married. Um, and, um, it's, you know, with things that that are going on between him and I, you know, as I mean, I always say married, but we're not married. Um, but just relationship wise, you know, it's, it's put a strain on our relationship. You know what I mean? Um, even being celibate, it's put a strain on the relationship. Um, and, and, you know, and I was telling him because it's so hard, you know, like we know, it's hard to get guys to open up and to talk, you know, and to feel comfortable with somebody to talk about. Um, and with him, you know, just trying to get him to talk to somebody. And when I, you know, I told him this, I think like two weeks ago, I was like, you know, maybe you should talk to Pastor Kyle, you know, like talk to Pastor Kyle, get out there, go. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's that pride or that ego or, you know, whatever it is that they have <laughs> that, that keeps them from doing it, um, from doing that. And he kind of brought up a, a good question because I was like, well, you haven't made an effort. Like you haven't tried to talk to somebody about it. And he had said, he was like, well, how am I supposed to talk to somebody? He goes, if we're not living in like, like our house is in order, like we're not married even though we're trying to do that you know what I mean we're still technically not married so he's like how would I he goes how would he be able to give me advice when we know that it's going to be you know get married and I'm you know so I was kind of like I get what you're saying because he said he doesn't want to um put him in a position where he's contradicting you know because we're not married you know so I was just like I understand so he keeps telling me you know he's like well I'm gonna marry you I'm gonna marry you you know but um, it's like how do I explain it? So if you're walking with Christ, mm-hmm. there is the Christ's way to live. And there's the world there. Mm-hmm. There's the opposite of that. Okay. Yeah. The world, the world says we're going to live this way. Okay. And I love that you said this because mm-hmm. it's, it's so good. Cause you're not the only one. Okay. On the call, <laughs> you're like, I'm the only, you're not. there's a lot of people on, on, on this call and people who are, who are listening to this call, um, that are going through this. So it's so good that you asked this question that you brought this up because you, the fact that the question that you're asking is how can I get my, how can I stop, um, experiencing these things in my house? And it's because your flesh and your, your spirit are fighting each other. Okay. So you're trying to live in God's eyes, but yet you're still living in the world. Okay. If I can just speak truth to you. Okay. Cause the world says live together, but you don't need to have a covenant right? Yeah. But that's not what God says. God says that you need to have a covenant. So when Jason comes to Kyle and says, this is what's going on, how can, the only way that he can mm-hmm. minister is by saying, hey, let's call, let's, let's get the elephant out of the room, yeah. right? Because that's what it is, mm-hmm. right? It's that it, this is what's, this is what's stirring you. So my sister, mm-hmm. she would call me and say, Stell, I need you to come because there's demons in my house. And so I would go over there and I'd go and I would go shoot the demons out. Right. In Jesus name, I would take down and mm-hmm. I cast them out in Jesus name. Right. And she would keep calling me still there's demons, yeah. there's demons, there's demons. I would keep going over there and praying over her house, casting them yeah. out. And, but finally I have to say, sis, I love you, but and I can keep doing this, but you keep inviting them in. Exactly. Okay. So if you keep inviting them in, this is, you're going to constantly be this. So spiritually, my spiritual answer to you is until you get your house in order, you're not going to have, it's going to be chaotic. Right. And I, and mm-hmm. I know, like I, I talked to, you know, um, sisters on the call that have dealt with this, some who mm-hmm. are married right now. And if she wants to chime in, she can, <laughs> who are mm-hmm. married, that doesn't have a house in order. Okay. So yeah. it, but it's a different battle because she's married, mm-hmm. right. A different battle. Um, 
but does that make sense? So it's, and it's, there's no yeah. shame and there's no guilt because God loves you, Jen. He loves uh -huh. you. He loves anybody else who's dealing with this right now. I know it's hard, you know, but I want you to understand the spiritual uh, view of it, that because the house is not in order in the godly design, that it's hard for God to come in there and because you're, you're allowing, mm -hmm. right. And your mm -hmm. heart is to marry. You want to marry this guy, right? You love mm -hmm. him. He loves you. I mean, where are you going? Okay. <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, and, and that's what that's what's hard about it too, is because you know, we do um like he's like, I'm he goes, I would do it right now, you know, if I because you know, I'm I'm still technically married from you know so many years ago. Um and just you know, in case somebody misses no, but Jason and I have been together 14 years, but um my ex-husband never wanted to do the divorce. So now he's on board to do the divorce, you know. So now I'm trying to, you know, try to figure it out with that paperwork and he wants to marry me. Um, but I think like with with us, with him, because of certain conditions, you know, it's it, I don't know. It's just there's so there's other, you know, personal things that it's like, okay, how do I know if I marry you? that you know or if we get married how do we, you know or if that's something where faith comes in you know uh where it's like okay is this going to be different or is it going to be the same thing well, that we've been dealing with for here's years? the thing too because you're not married now yeah but you're living with him exactly. so you accept yeah. him now mm -hmm. in a place of non-marriage so but why? you're living yeah. <laughs> right? so then why would you not accept him yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah. so, you know what I mean? So like it's it, it yeah. those are lies that the enemy tries to tell you, right? That because you you've been with him for 14 years, you know him in and out. You know what I mean? And you know what God has, it's just been a short time, a year, Jen. Yeah. You guys have been following God, right? And I think so, why is, you know, right now, like how you said, you know, we've been together for so long. But um, we're, you know, with this whole spiritual battle, we've been just reevaluating each other in our yeah. situation and just like, is this enough like our or should they, should we just go our separate ways and right. you know figure it out you know but um but it, it's just so hard because I do yeah. feel you know I'm so afraid about it like and I'm like you know Lord if that's if that's what you want if that's what uh needs to happen then then well make it, here, make it easy, you know but but let me know yeah <laughs> here's what needs to happen is you need to do premarital counseling uh, with pastor and I you guys have to okay. just make that happen you know whether it's on zoom or you guys, or we come like in, um, we stay an hour later or half an hour later at your house on Thursday nights, but that's a great opportunity where we can sit and just, all right, let's talk about this, right? Because you do, if, if you have the, and I'm gonna let you um, jump in here, Gwen, but if you have the conversations, do the pre premarital, and then you're going to figure out, oh, okay, maybe I don't want to be with him. Maybe we are too different, right? You know, where it's not, it's not working. Um, but if you gave him 14 years in the world, together exactly. mm -hmm. you should get try to give him a little bit longer in the in the in the walk you know give him grace mm -hmm. he's, he's yeah you know what I mean so I mean that's just what God's showing me right now you know um have a little bit more grace and let God work through him right it took years to get Pastor Kyle <laughs> to be <laughs> to feel like you know what I mean I prayed and prayed for that guy for years you know what I mean so um but hey let me let me, let me have uh, Gwen come in and ch chime in real quick okay Hey, sis. Hey. Mm -hmm. Listening to you, this is a big thing that me and Ernie had struggled with. Um, for whoever doesn't know, Ernie was my ex-husband. We have been together 21 years. We've been together 21 years. And out of those 21 years, uh, when we got divorced, we moved back in together, right? And we were living together. And we were having the sexual, we were, you know, everything as a married couple. We weren't married. I had two jobs. He had two jobs. We were struggling. I mean, we were paycheck to paycheck, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we came into church. Out of 21 years, we have two years of communication, like, out of 21 years, only two years of communication where we could sit down and we could be like, hey, you know what? You did this. You know what? You offended me on this. And, you know, I took it. I was a person that I was like, oh, well, suck it up. You know, you're the man. You're supposed <laughs> to take it. You know, why are you, here? Why are you crying? You know, 
but within these past two years, it was like, oh, you know, my bad. I'm sorry, I did that wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I yeah. ended up losing both of my jobs. He lost one of his jobs. So we're down to only him working. And okay. when we put God in our life, and it was hard because like I was a big Ginny Rivera. Like I lived Ginny Rivera's life, you know, and yeah. to point like she was an idol. Like it was like, Ernie, you either live the way mm -hmm. like Ginny Rivera and her attitude or you mm -hmm. move out, you know? And then yeah. he was like scary movie after scary movie after scary movie, you know, and our house was chaotic. It was upside mm -hmm. down. It, fights like dumb fights like over how to fix a hot dog like <laughs> it would it would come out to a point that it was like well move out get out of here you loser you know and all this and that mm -hmm. and he would be like you're so stupid you know you can't even do a hot dog and you know and it was just chaotic <laughs> But then like we got into church and then he took the step because he always said, heck, no, I'm never going to get remarried. Heck, no, especially to you. Look at, you know, the hell, like I'm not going to go back to living in the hell. You know, we got into church. We got into communicating. He's the one who stepped up and said, you know what? We need order in our house. We're getting married, you know, and he took that step, you okay. know. And then we get married and so forth on his one paycheck. We're living comfortable enough to where, okay, we don't have to decide if we're going to pay electricity or get groceries. We don't have to decide, are we going to put gas in the car or we're not going to have insurance, you know, and that's only one paycheck and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. And a matter of fact, we got like two extra bills piled up on top of us you yeah. know and once y'all take that step and we've changed our like what we watch what we listen to and like my mom and my sister I know like I'll frustrate them at times because I'll be like uh, uh you need to turn that music off you know put some praise music or I'll be like even the other day I was sitting here with Miho and I put Disney channel on the first thing that popped up was a devil hmm. in a cartoon, you know, and you had to get past the devil to get to like a pleasure island or something. Wow. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, even like in cartoons and stuff, like everything has to change, like not just like <laughs> one person. And then like I have talked to pastor before and she was like, what did y'all open up at your house? You know, you're opening up, you're allowing, you know, things to come in through what you're reading or watching, what you're listening to and so forth. So like maybe like you and Jason can get together. And I mean, if he wants, like Ernie would be available to talk to him to like what he went through because we went to like having sex like three to four times a day to none right because we weren't married and he was like we're sinning like that's a sin by itself that we're living together as husbands and wives when yeah. we're you know and he was like you're blocking my blessing by us not being married and being sexual he said and I don't want to be having sex he said because that's a a sin I was like dude you live with me that's the sin itself like we're not married <laughs> You know, but yeah. we we went through a lot of sacrifices and it wasn't even like a sacrifice, you know, yeah. like it's just, but now that we're married, that we're committed to each other, it's like a lot has changed now. Do you um, feel like your relationships changed? Our relationship has changed. Our home has changed. Like our home even looks yeah. brighter now. Like we yeah. can all the shades we can have everything closed and the house still looks bright you know it's not that gloomy anymore it's not that oppression it's not that I don't know like I didn't even want to be home like that's how bad it was like I didn't even want to be home and now I'm fine if we're here all day and all night like 
Amen. there's a shift, you know, when we made that move and that, that turnaround, like there is a shift in our home. And now, like, I didn't even know till the other night that I read it, he's getting baptized. Like, oh, God. He, would, he always said, no, I don't want to get baptized because I'm not ready to give up my scary movies. No, I'm not, you know, ready to get baptized because I don't want to give up a Futurama. He's a big Futurama person. <laughs> but there's like so much aliens and, you know, like a lot of worldly things and last night or not last night but the other night he was telling me are we gonna dedicate the baby I said yes and he was like oh he said that would be crazy he said that everybody's um baptized and everything except for me mm. and I was like well that's something you need to think about he said I've been praying on it he said but I really don't want to give up some of my movies and stuff like that but then I go and I get onto the chat and I see that, hey, sign me up for wow. baptismal. And I was all like, what? When he came home, I was like, oh, I'm going to let him have it. Like, why did I have to find out through Facebook? <laughs> so but she said, add me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, I mean, I'm praying for you, sis. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we gave up and that we so-called say we sacrificed, but it wasn't a sacrifice because look at what we're doing now. Look at the blessing over blessings that yeah. are coming on us. Yeah. And I think that's where like the, I guess like the lie came in because I know I was, I was just like, oh, well, that's only like if you have sex, <laughs> like premarital sex, you know, but you're right, you know, like you still live together, you know, um, and then, you know, too, I was just like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's fine, because, you know, we're following God, but we're not, we're not doing that, you know, uh, so you, I guess you just start telling yourself, you know, that, oh, it's fine, it's fine because of this, right, uh, and then after a while, time just passes, and then it just gets harder, you know, so, um, right. so yeah, definitely. and then I'll take you up on that offer, I'll let him know about Ernie, thank you, Gwen, I appreciate yeah. it, and that, like so much that we hear that we need not to go to a sugar coat at church or pastors, mm -hmm. like we need to quit sugar coating ourselves to make us mm -hmm. comfortable for us to be okay with our living. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I know that's like a lot of women, you know, like I know in our friend groups, you know, too, you know, everybody's just like, oh, it's okay. Or you just won't, you don't want to seem so rude or so mean, but, um, uh, but now it's like, you know, you're, you're obligated to tell the truth. You know what I mean? Because then that's, um, then you, you would, I would feel condemned, you know, like, oh my gosh, why did I let them carry on like that? You know, uh, so you're right. That's so good. You're, you are meant to speak truth, right? Not to tickle ears. And it's not fun. It's not fun for me to, to speak truth and say, you know, like, oh, you know, this is why it's happening to you. Right. But, um, but I have to right? And I'll, I'll keep doing it. And it's so good that I love Gwen's testimony. I can't wait for marriage mm -hmm. encounter because you're going to have to speak up there and share your <laughs> testimony, Gwen. But um, it's so good, you know, and knowing that, that Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you guys. And he's proud of you for, for your progress, you know, but this is the thing that's, that's, that's holding you back just from that one piece, right? This can be the, 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 the thing that pushes you into what you've been asking God for. You know, cause I know you've been asking God for some things, right. And so this is the mm -hmm. area that God's like, I need you to focus on this. Right. And mm -hmm. if, if you're like, well, I don't know if I want to be with, with him, then, you know, then you shouldn't live with them. Yeah. Right. Because if you are, you're saying this, but this and this, but, but not this, but this, yeah. right. So God's mm -hmm. very clear, right. The world has gray areas. God mm -hmm. is straight up. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the world has so many gray areas. We're like, yeah, but you know, cause a lot of people will get married because of, mm -hmm. or or they'll move in together for bills right mm -hmm. but who's the source she went from four four jobs to one to now having an extra having extra income mm -hmm. right and yeah. it, it changes everything you know and it's not the the lie of the enemy is oh you're just pressuring me to get married to you know to, for this church no it's it's the word of mm -hmm. God you know and it's it's your walk so um, if, you, yeah. if you love each other mm -hmm. and you call you're called to hey you know what let's do this together let's let's work 
on this together. Let's do this together. Let's, let's run after God together. Right. Let's do the things that we need to do. Like premarital counseling, like marriage counseling. When you guys, if you guys get married, like, what do we got to do to make this better? Right. Because a house that's on a firm foundation will not sink. Right. But the house has to be on God's foundation. Our foundation, they will sink, but God's foundation, the rock won't sink. Right. So right now that's why it's like this. It's a little wavy. Right. You know, like I, many people I minister to like throughout the week, like I'm t- saying the same thing. It's, it's, this is why, because of the foundation, right? So does that help Jen? Exactly. It, it does. Um, it does. And I know, I know where we both want the same thing. I know we both want it to work out and I know we both want to get married. Um, and, you know, it's so hard to, you know, like in that spiritual battle, it's just clouded. Everything's clouded. And then uh, it's uh, like you said, spirit of offense, you know, just getting offended or, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, like uh, I'm not a solid. You can't just pick what you want out of me, you know, and throw the rest away. Um, yeah. And that's kind of what it's been. So it's it's been interesting to see us get through this point, um, going, you know, going to church or how you are trying to listen in on church. Um, and just fighting the spiritual battle with knowing that God's on our side, you know, and just being able to see the tactics and things like that. And we're like, whoa, that's not us. Like, that's not who we are. Why are we being like this to each other? You know, and just kind of being aware. So now we're more aware um, because I know we've gotten past that, that, okay, scream, like how Gwen said, screaming and yelling, <laughs> you know, now yeah. we're just, we're talking, we're communicating, but that does help. Uh, that does help. And I didn't know that there was a premarital marital counseling so that's even better too. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's just calling us saying, saying, let's get together. We get called all the time, right? Like, hey, can you guys talk to me and so and so? Yeah, let's do it. Right. And we'll a lot of the time just do it right after Connect Group, you know, or we'll go meet up for coffee or something. So I would definitely say that. Reach out, reach out, don't wait. Reach out. You know, if there's something going on, do that. But um, you know, and and you the premarital is gonna show you where where you're at you know, and what you're willing to work on, what you got to work on, but at least, you know, now, right now, at least you can look at the yeah. big picture and say, okay, because we have not shut this door yet. Mm-hmm. This is why we have this stuff going on. Right. So at least yeah. you can see why this is happening. Cause it's not anything that you're doing to strive. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's, just, it's that part, right. Exactly. And there's chaos. Right. And then when you get married, that doesn't mean that mm-hmm. like Gwen and Ernie don't have any issues, right. Or discussions of the purpose. Mm-hmm you know, but now their battle is going to be different. Now their battle is they're on the same side, right? Mm -hmm. They're battling together against the enemy. They're one, right? Right now it's you, it's whoever this is about. This is the the, the woman, the man, right? Yeah. You're trying to battle and then you're going against each other, right? But when you're married, you're one covenant, you're in covenant, one together, battling against the enemy. Okay. So let's do it next Thursday, right after the connect group. Let's chat yeah, you can do that. <laughs> at your house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for asking this question. Anybody else have any other questions? I, I love this, man. We got to do this um, more often. Keep asking those questions. What question do you have? Any topic? One more. Anything? Anything? No. Why? Okay. Let me go on. Let me, then let me give you some, some, um, things to, to think about, right. What, as, as I was preparing for this call, I was like, Hey Lord, what are some things that we need to, you know, kind of just talk about a little bit, you know, I'm not going to go into it because each of these are, uh, are a message, but I just want to kind of touch on some things, give you guys some scriptures to, um, to kind of look over as you are, uh, facing these things so right now, you know, you, you heard about religion versus relationship, right? You heard about that earlier on the call, right? Like you, you don't, we don't need religion. We were, I was saved and set free from religion. Okay. Now I have Jesus, right? When you know Jesus and you have a relationship with God, you are not going to run from him because you want all of him. And that's why, that's why there's such a, um, a yearning and such a war inside of you because your flesh is trying to come against the the supernatural and the supernatural wins every time. Right. So that's going to keep, you know, as long as you keep running after God, you're going to, the super, the, um, the, the flesh part of you will start falling down. It will not, you know, last, but, um, all the traditional, all the cultural, all the things that you've been taught and, and raised in, you got to say, God, is that from you? Or is this just traditional, right? Ask about that, inquire about that, read in, in the word and see what God says about it. You know, um, and I will say this, don't be so religious-y, 
okay, that we start speaking Christianese and we start, you know, like nobody can relate to you because you're so Christianese, okay? There's a thing with, with that, you know, you're supposed to go and relate. When God went, sat with Jesus, Jesus sat with the sinners, he didn't sit with them to, to become them and be like them and sit there, right? But he, he, he was able to speak to them, right? He, and, and, and through the anointing that he, that he was, he was able, they were able to follow him, right? They were able to get healed or, or, you know, saved. So we have to be able to be, um, not be so religious in our language that we're unrelatable, right? There's a reason why God chose you and who you are. Don't lose your, 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 your personality. Don't lose your, 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 your funniness, your sense of humor, you know, add that to the God, add that to your, your, you know, people are drawn to you. That's why God's using you, right? Um, you, you will be used for these things. So don't be so unrelatable to where that's why I always say, share your, share your testimony, because if you share your testimony, then you just drop down your walls. You're like, man, yeah, I'm, I'm, I went through this. I, I dealt with mommy, mommy abandonment and rejection too. I get it. Right. Kyle too. Right. He dealt with, with, uh, with abandonment from his daddy, right. Rejection from his daddy, right. Like just a lot of, you know, from his family, there's a lot of things, right. We got to share that part right now. Here's one thing I want to add to this too, because I hear this a lot. I hear this a lot where this is what Kyle has gotten. Okay. He's a white boy pastor. Okay. In San Antonio. All right. In a place where it's predominantly Hispanic people. Okay. Really diverse place. Right. And yeah, he was in Arizona where it was like, it was a melting pot in Arizona too, but like there was a lot of white people in Arizona. Okay. <laughs> All right. But now he's in a place where there's a lot of Hispanics out here, right? Like culturally diverse. And the people that, the, the things that people try to say is, well, I can't relate to him. He doesn't know what I've gone through. But if he's anointed and sent by God, he has the Holy Spirit in him, then he should relate to everybody, right? It's not about him and what his background is because he was abandoned as a, as a child, right? He dealt with rejection and so did you, but why does this race matter, right? We got to remove that lie of the enemy to say that my church should look like me and act like me. And that's how I can relate to you. That's a lie of the enemy. So there's a difference with relate, related, relatability. Okay. When you relate to somebody, it's, it's not, um, it's not, let me, become like that person to be able to speak the gospel but it's let me just the relatability is let me bring holy spirit into this place right how do you think i'm able to minister to ladies who are who are not my my race who are not my age right and they're able to feel the presence of god without without even me saying anything yet right because i have holy spirit in me right but if i carry prejudgment in me if i carry these things of, well, I don't know if I can minister and doubt and I, I don't look like them. So therefore I shouldn't speak to them. I, I don't, I didn't come from the same background they did, but you're a messenger of God and there's one Holy spirit, right? There's one Holy spirit. So we have to, we have to remember that just because, um, we have white ministers and Mexican ministers or Mexican ministers and black ministers, that does not mean that you can only, uh, speak to your race right? What color is heaven? What language does heaven speak? Do you think it speaks your, your language? Do you think it's, you, we speak English all day? We speak Spanish all day in heaven? Come on, there's a heavenly language for that purpose. Why are we making heaven what we think it, what it should look like? Why can't we receive from somebody who is African-American? Why can't we receive from somebody who, who was rich who was poor, right? If you know that you're by spirit, then you can receive Holy Spirit's in the house, right? So I want you to be careful with that. That that's when you become Christianese and you start creating your Christian culture based off of your familiarity. Okay. You're trying to be like, I'm familiar with this, right? There's Jesus couldn't, couldn't preach to the people in his hometown. Couldn't be a prophet to the people in his own hometown. Why? Because there's familiar. Oh, isn't he just the carpenter's son? Come on. Isn't he just a, 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 isn't she just a Filipino girl, five foot one and a half? Like, who is she going to say anything to? Who is she going to, 
what, what life has she gone through to, to uh, talk to me about my stuff? Come on, break off that familiarity right now. God will use you because I want you to know this because there's people looking at you thinking the same thing. How can you ever teach me? And you say, you shut that down in Jesus name. It's because of my brokenness. It's because of the broken pieces that I have in my, in my life that God pulled me from the pit that he's going to use me. Come on. Do you look like what you've been through? Do you want to wear all your sins on your face? No, I don't look like what I've been through. I look healed and whole and, and full of Jesus. Come on, right? But you don't see that because I'm walking in my joy because I choose joy. But let me tell you what he's done for me, right? You might see a smile on my face today, but you didn't see me crying in the pit. You didn't see me tormented in the pit, right? You didn't see those things. You didn't see me crying, rejected, right? At birth, right? All those things. But you see what he did today. That's why we can't hide that piece. We can't hide the testimony piece because people don't care. They want to know, what, well, who are you? You're this person standing on a stage. You're this person at work talking about God. Well, who are you, right? And you're like, well, let me tell you who I was and who I'm not anymore. I sure was that one that party. I sure was the one that went to the club all the time. It's the weekend. Let's go waste all of our money. Let's go get our paycheck and spend it all and not have anything for the future, right? Let's spend right now. Let's get rid of everything. Come on. I sure was that hot mess, right? Man, I was living paycheck to paycheck. I was like, oh my gosh. And I was living off of credit cards. Come on, right? Always a hustler though. Always hustled. But I was not a good steward. I was not a good steward, right? <laughs> Write it down. What's the shirt? <laughs> Come on. God has called us to be good stewards. And that doesn't just mean financially. That means as, as um, in your walk, right? In your marriage, in your relationships, in your workplace, how are we stewarding the areas that we have, right? So, um, so that's a whole message right there. Okay, let me switch over and then we're going to wrap up. This is just, you guys, I'm loving this. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Proverbs 22, six says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And then when they get older, they will not depart from it. Okay. We talked about that. We're teaching our children, Jesus, not religion. We're teaching our people, our, our children, Jesus. So that way, when the enemy comes to lie about our kids and comes to, to create lies and create, um, defamatory words, these whatever slander against our children or tries to tempt, tempt our children that our kids are going to say, Nope, that's not from God. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. That's a lie, right? That's a lie of the enemy, right? We have to train them up they, so that when they grow up, they are so rooted in the relationship with Jesus that they might sway on the vine, but they won't break off the vine, right? They may go back and forth and say, hey, I'm kind of a little tempted. I'm curious about that. I'm kind of curious about that, but nope, I know better. Nope, I know Jesus, right? I grew up in a really crazy atmosphere. Okay. Um, I know probably maybe some of you guys are like, no, it's crazy as mine. Well, good. <laughs> good. Let's just keep sharing the testimony. Okay. But I grew up in a pretty crazy, it was like world war three. We would have MP surrounding my house trying to, you know, hunting down my dad. Cause he was an alcoholic. My mom was an alcoholic. Like every, it was just, it was crazy, you know, and it was just intense. A lot of things like that. But one thing that my dad did, even during, as an alcoholic is he planted the seed of Jesus in me right? He still said, Miha, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Cause he was an amazing. He's an amazing daddy, right? Alcohol is not who they are. It's a sin. Okay. And it was a stronghold for him, but, um, he would say, tell me, Jesus loves you, Miha, and make sure that you're doing what's right. Because no matter what, where you go, when you face God at the heavenly gates, he's going he's to play the video of your life. He's going to say, why did you do this? Why did you choose these things? I believe that in my head, my entire upbringing, entire, like, like I went through some crazy stuff, but I remember going through college and I was like, oh no, I don't want to, I don't want to do this God. Cause I know you're going to play my life. <laughs> you're going to play my life. Right. And I had that with me. So when I was in those dark areas, I remembered that, that seed that my dad planted. And I didn't, I said no to things. Right. Now there's some things I said yes to, I shouldn't have done. Okay. But there's things that I should, that I, I heard him. I heard my dad right? Come on. So don't stop with those seeds. Keep planting those seeds. Keep speaking life and keep saying, Miha, God loves you. Miho, God loves you. He loves you. He treasures you, right? He's proud of you. I'm sorry that I opened doors for you 
we need to be quick about that moms. And, you know, we got to be quick about that. I'm sorry that I chose, uh, uh, I made decisions that affected your life. I'm sorry that you went through this. I'm sorry that because of me, you experienced rejection. Because of me, you're experiencing abandonment right now. I'm sorry that I walked you through those things because I chose those doors. So I, I apologize. Please forgive me. I repent. And I want to give you the best life that I can now, right? Like, listen, don't be afraid because you're, you're trying to follow God and run after Jesus when they have seen your past you. They walked with you knowing who you were. And you're like, no, I'm, I'm saved now. I'm good but they still remember you. They still remember what they've gone through. So you got to give your kids grace, give the children grace and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And guess what? Your parents should be saying that to you too, but they're probably not right. So listen, there's doors that were open for you that you didn't choose. Forgive them. Lord God, forgive them for they know not what they do right? Forgive your parents, forgive your grandparents, forgive your children, forgive your siblings, quit holding and harnessing the bitterness. You're never going to be set free. Get out of the prison that you're putting yourself into. Can I speak truth to you guys right now? Can I pastor y'all right now, right? You have to let yourself out of the prison gates. When you forgive, it's not to say, Hey, I forgave you for those things, right? And I got to go face them and forgive you. I forgive you to set you free. You're forgiving to set yourself free. Because forgiveness, unforgiveness creates bitter roots. And you will forever have them until you've set them, set yourself free. Okay. So you have to forgive. Forgiveness is needed. You got to forgive. Let me read a scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you've been harboring, holding on to, you got to let that go. Because it's just holding you back. Okay. It says in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. Jesus, it's in his word. So what I want you to do, I'm going to give you a little homework assignment, okay? And I'll end with this. We have so much. I, we, we're going way over our time. But here's a homework assignment. I want you to write down all the names of the people that hurt you. Okay. Now, if you forgave them, don't write them down. Don't rehash. Okay. I'm not telling you to go and rehash all the things that I was forg I forgave him for this. And I'm going to bring it back in. Don't bring it. Whatever's hurting you right now, the people that hurt you right now. Okay. And the people that you hurt. Kalisma and there. Okay. The people that hurt you and the people that you hurt and be real. No one's going to read your paper, but Jesus will. Okay. It's you and God. This is between you and God. And I want you to, to pray over every single person that you write on that paper. And I want you to ask God to bless them. And I want you to ask God to, this is if you want to, okay? I'm just, I'm just giving you a suggestion, okay? <laughs> I'm not forcing you to do this, okay? But if you want to be set free, I want you to ask God to forgive yourself, right? And bless them. That's all you can do. You can't change people. You're not anybody's fixer. You're not anybody's Holy Spirit. You're not anybody's condemner or convictor, okay? But what you can do is change yourself. Set yourself free. Love them. Love them. Yeah, but you don't know what they did to me. Set yourself free. They have to face God, whatever it is. They have to face God, and so do you. So are you worried about them? Or are you, you should be loving them. Lord, I, that's why you got to pray for them. Bless them, God. Bless them, forgive them for they know not what they do. But Lord, let me not be the one that holds, holds any of this in. Walking through life, trying to minister to people when I harbor um, bitterness and unforgiveness in my heart. Okay, so write that stuff down. Pray over them. Right. And here's another step. If you need to do another step to help you with this, if there's somebody specifically that you're like, I don't know if I can let this go. I don't know if I can let this go. I have so much unforgiveness towards this person. Right. Then I want you to write them a letter. You don't have to send it to them, but write it out. Write out the letter. Say exactly how you feel. Release all of it. Get it out of you. Read it out loud. So it's out of you and then pray that God forgives you 
And Lord, whatever my part was in this situation, please forgive me. I could have handled it better, right? And then God, I forgive, I, I forgive them. I release them to you. Seal it up. Seal the envelope up. Okay? And then rip it up. Rip it up. But do these movements that you can be set free no more. Right? Gone are the days where you're holding on to this, this bitterness and unforgiveness. How can you move forward? There's a clog. You got to ima imagine there's a pipe from your heart to heaven. Okay? And God wants to download all of his gifts into you he has so much to overflow into you he has so much he wants to give but there is so much that you're harboring okay that he can't get into the pipe it's god he can do what he wants but he wants your obedience it's your obedience right he wants to bless you but he wants you to be obedient because he has blessings for you okay his blessings for you like beyond counting in a human mind okay he has blessings but a lot of these blessings were blocking because of unforgiveness because of sins that we're still partnering with because of not stewarding the areas that he gave us right things that we're holding on to right we gotta let go we don't want I, my, my biggest thing for with god was like lord i don't want to be a hypocrite i don't want to speak your your name and live for Jesus while having a different life behind closed doors, right? Or harboring anything else that's, that's not from you, God, right? Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you, Jesus, for this call. I thank you, Lord, for all of these women, Lord, that came on today. I thank you, Lord, that they came on because they want to hear you, God. They want to hear truth. They, wanna, um, they want um, to be led, Lord God. They want to walk in your truth, God. I just pray right now, God, that you would wrap your arms around them right where they're at, that they would feel loved by you, God. Holy Spirit, I ask you just to come onto them right now. Let your anointing pour over their heads. I just pray right now, the oil of heaven is pouring down. I pray that you would saturate the room that they're in right now. I pray, God, that, um, that Lord, as you convicted any of them, Lord, I know you always convict me, God. But as you convict any of us, God, today, I pray, Lord, that we wouldn't just um, put it down and, and walk away. I pray, God, that we would um, let it saturate so that we can start doing the movement. That we can start walking through these areas in our lives that we need to just um, give to you and release to you. The areas that we've been trying to control and hold on to traditions that we've been holding on to that we have not let go unforgiveness and bitterness the roots lord god that are not from you areas that we've partnered with god i pray lord that you would just give us wisdom give us guidance lord I ask you lord just to touch their hearts right now give them their next steps god lord i pray god every um every a popular thing that has been spoken to us, Lord, over the years, Lord, that we just tend to believe, but it, it wasn't truth. I pray, God, that you would expose those words, expose popular culture, so that we can live kingdom culture. Lord, we're not trying to get a platform. We're not trying to be famous. We're not trying to go in and put our names in lights, God. We are here on assignment to make you famous, God to go and make disciples, like you said, to share God, that even though we are imperfect, that you love us and that you will use us. You will use the broken parts of us, Lord God, and heal us. And you would put us out there, Lord God, to speak your truth. So I pray, Lord, that you would just continue, God, just keep, keep uh, exposing right now, revealing to all your daughters right now in this call, reveal to them the areas that need to be exposed. Reveal to them the areas that need to be addressed right now, God. Lord, we love you. We know that, God, you're not a condemning God. We speak your truth. And we can't pick and choose your Bible like a buffet. We can't pick and choose because we're going to constantly live in chaos, God. So, Lord, I ask you, Lord, just to come into our hearts, just to reveal to us, God, so that we can live right. We'll never be perfect, 
but we can aim to live a, a perfect life because we serve a perfect God. Jesus, we love you. We need you, Holy Spirit. If we don't feel your presence, Lord God, show us why. If we don't feel the tangible presence of Jesus over us, God, show, tell us why. Are we in the wrong place? Are there doors open that need to be shut? What needs to be revealed, God? What needs to be shut? Jesus, we love you. You are mighty. You are wonderful. You are sovereign. Thank you, God, that you are the only one that sits on the throne of our hearts. That we do not put people on the throne of our hearts, God. We don't put our spouse on the throne of our hearts, God. We don't put our children on the throne of our hearts. We don't put our church on the throne of our hearts, God. But we put you. You. You sit on the throne. Jesus, if we lost everything, all we need is you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. I pray that over every household. Come, Holy Spirit. And no spirit but the Holy Spirit in these homes. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. And we honor you. And it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you have never received God and you want to receive him right now, it's such a blessing. Raise your hand, comment there, and we'll pray for you right now. It's a blessing. It's an honor. If you've received God before and you just are wandering and you're like, I've been, I, Lord, I know your word and I've been wandering. I've been doing the opposite. Well, right now is a great time to rededicate. And if you want to rededicate, you guys can raise your hand. Comment. Don't be ashamed. This is your time. God's like, let's go. Let's go. Let's go on fire, right? For the kingdom of heaven. God loves you. He loves you. If that's you, raise your hand. We're going to leave a comment there. Yes, Sister Jasmine. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Is this your, are you, are you um, rededicating or are you get, um, giving your life for the first time? So I can know how to pray. rededicating amen praise god praise god amen is there anybody else thank you jesus thank you jesus this is the day amen 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 all right we're gonna pray let's pray for our sister jasmine guys put hands out towards our sister here Father God, we lift up Jasmine to you right now, God. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are so good, Lord God. What a celebration it is, God. Lord, you know, Lord, that we're human. You know, God, that we would, um, would, would wander because that's what we're sheep, Lord God. And it's very easy for us to do because we're human. So I thank you, God, that no matter what, no matter how far out we wander, no matter what we've done, Lord God, to go off course, Lord God, you don't count our mistakes. You don't count the sins. You don't count all those things, God. You just bring us back home. You put the finest um, clothing on us, Lord God. You put the finest jewelry on you. You make a feast for us, God, to return us back home. And you welcome us back with open arms, just like you did in the prodigal son. So I thank you, Father God, that you have welcomed Jasmine back home into your arms, God, that you love her that you love everything about her, God. I thank you, Jesus, that right now she doesn't have to start over. She just has to keep running and that you put her back on track. You put her back on the path that you got for her, Lord. So Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that, that she has rededicated her life to you, walking on the path that you have set for her, God. Holy Spirit living in her. Thank you, Jesus, for that. We thank you, Lord, for the celebration. We thank you, Father God, for that reunion. We thank you, Jesus, for the reconciliation of her heart, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We praise you and we honor you. And it's in your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So just as you are um, giving your life for the first time, right, when you're rededicating, you're just saying, God, I know that I made mistakes. I know that I, I went off track, but God, I repent right? And you repent and you turn from those ways and God is welcoming you back home. So amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Yes. It's a celebration. Jessica, are you in, are you in Texas or are you Arizona? Where are you at? You're in San Antonio. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. Praise God. Well, we always have women events. So if you ever want to get together and 
come to one of our, we have a women's brunch coming up. We do something monthly here in the area. Um, if you don't have a church home already, we have one. You know, if you need that, let me know and we'll get that information to you. If you have a church home, absolutely keep plugging in, plug into wherever the connect groups are, get connected. And that's how you stay, you know, on track. And um, it's hard. It's hard to, to stay on track without a community, you know, so we are, we're here for you, girl. We're here for you. If you ever need anything, you reach out to us. Okay. Excited. Hope to meet you. All right, ladies. Well, that is it. So, um, and Jasmine, you can reach out to me if you need to on, on, on Facebook. Okay. If you see me on there or you can, in the kingdom culture, Facebook page, you can find me on there as well. Um, but ladies, I love you all. God bless you. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Have a beautiful rest of your weekend. Get to church on Sunday. <laughs> You're the body. Get to church. We need you there. God needs his people to love on others, right? So we love you guys. Have a great rest of your week. And we'll see you guys back next week. Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. God bless you. Bye. Bye.